Hello, Jeff Zwerink here, and welcome back to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and help you be more confident in the truth of Christianity. Today I'm joined by Dr. Darren Williams, and we're going to be discussing the question, does quantum mechanics remove the need for the universe having a cause? Darren, it's good to have you here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So I just kind of give a little bit of background. I know you're a professor of physical chemistry at That's Sam correct. Houston State University. You've been yes. what sort of classes do you I've teach? I've been there? teaching physical chemistry for the last 15 years there, okay. which is quantum mechanics and spectroscopy, and then in the spring thermodynamics. So let's let's kind of explore that quantum mechanics because this is. Uh, Quantum mechanics is just weird when you get right down it to is. it. It is. It's a mysterious area of science, and I think a lot of people are curious about it. So I know there are people that talk about how quantum mechanics can get rid of causation or seems to have things happen without a cause. What are some of the things in quantum mechanics that lead people to make statements like that? One of the cleanest examples is radioactive decay. Uh, we know the properties of lots of atoms and the statistics associated with the group of atoms, but when it comes down to a particular atom, we don't have any math that describes when that atom will, de will decay. So, so the idea being, well, it's just sitting around there and it just decays without right. any without cause. Without a cause, okay. yes. And, and so I think that that is a mystery to some folks. So, I mean, just kind of going deeper, it seems like most of quantum mechanics has this statistical nature. Yes. Just due to this, you know, I'll kind of explore this a little bit, the superposition yes. idea that things, yes. at least in the mathematics we use, things are both like decayed and undecayed at the same right. time. Right. You have, a, let's say, a particular particle in a lower state. This whole word of quantum mechanics, quantum just means a small jump or packet or discrete uh, difference in energy level. So okay. if, an, if an atom goes from this level to that level with interaction of light, you have three waves interacting with each other. Okay. We don't know exactly when that will jump. We know statistically how it will behave with a group of atoms, but a particular atom interacting with light, we couldn't say that it will absorb or not absorb. So just kind of as a practical measure standpoint, it sounds like when we're looking at thousands of atoms, we can predict very accurately what's yes. going to happen. When we're looking at an individual atom, per se, with the quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. we really don't know what's going to happen. On a particular individual atom, yes. And we have everyday products. If anyone's ever come into your home with a laser thermometer and measured the, the air vents to see if your air conditioning is working, that's the statistical behavior of the hot atoms in that air mm -hmm. vent. Then we know that very well, and we can tell you the temperature of the air coming through that vent. But a particular system, a particular atom, or a particular uh, photon of light, there's no math to describe a quantum jump. Okay. So, so let's kind of uh, delve into that. So if we've got this atom that's, for all intents and purposes, just sitting there and spontaneously decays. Correct. For all intents and purposes, we have no idea the mechanism behind it, if you will. Right. Um, there's no... No traceable cause, if you will. Right. Um, I'm gathering people extrapolate that and say if quantum mechanics does that, perhaps universes just pop into existence in yes. the same way. So they may have a beginning, a definable event, but there's no cause, if you will. Right. This was uh, a famous debate at Purdue between Alex Rosenberg and William Lane Craig talking about if quantum mechanics has things that happen without a cause, then perhaps universes could happen without a cause. So what do we do with that? Do we just say, well, yeah, things happen without a cause? <laughs> um, that, that seems to be a big thing from a philosophical statement that, you know, things that happen have a cause. Yes. That's, in fact, that's how science works most that's of right. the time. That's right, and that's, <laughs> a, that's a critical piece of uh, Dr. Craig's argument. He says things that begin to exist have a cause. That's right. premise one. And if you can attack that premise, then his whole Kalam argument falls. Yeah, well, it's not just his. That's, that's, that's a, right. That's a it's longstanding <laughs> philosophical yes, argument. Yes, causality, yes. Right. So why, I mean, why is it that people seem willing to give up causality, or what is it that allows them to think causality is not I think that it's, fundamental? I think it's will. an improper extrapolation. Okay. Just because you don't know the cause or can't mathematically write out the cause of a nuclear decay does not mean there is not a cause. Mm -hmm. You see the, the disconnect? Just because you don't know the cause doesn't mean that there is no cause. Okay. And I think that's the jump they're making. They're saying because we don't know there's a cause or a particular cause of this atom's decay, there is no cause. I don't think that's a legitimate extrapolation. Okay. So in some sense, it's kind of, you know, 
quantum mechanics allows us to mathematically describe what's happening, mm -hmm. even though we don't understand the basis of why it's happening. Yes. And so the extrapolation of saying we don't, because it's happening and we can describe the mathematics, the mathematics says we don't know why, then you can say there is no cause. Is the, the, is the, ex the wrong extrapolation? Yes, I think it's the wrong extrapolation. And there are some interesting experiments in quantum mechanics where clearly making the measurement causes the system to behave a certain way. We call it the observer effect. Okay. So in making the measurement, you actually interfere with the system and you cause it to do. You are kind of the cause as the observer. And that's, that's some philosophically laden uh, language there too. Mm -hmm. it, it, how can you cause an event that you're then observing? But that's where we get into this collapse of the wave function you mentioned earlier. Okay. There's this uncertainty as to whether, let's say, this, this uh, uh, particular system has emitted a photon of light or not. Mm -hmm. But by observing it, you see the photon of light, then you can conclude that it did emit. Well, and that's one of the very bizarre things about quantum mechanics is that there are no just independent systems, if you will. The very <laughs> fact that we're observing the system actually influences yes. what's going on in the system. Right. So I think this observer effect is a very important part of quantum mechanics. Okay. So, you know, so somebody brings us along and says, hey, universe doesn't have a cause. What do you, how would you respond to that? I would say, first of all, we don't know that. Okay. It's impossible to know that. We'd have to be outside of the universe to observe the whole system, mm -hmm. you know, thinking from an empirical standpoint. But even some have proposed, because we're here to observe the universe, we're the causes of the universe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a stretch, oh, a you know. Bizarre, I wasn't around okay. 14 billion years ago, but, right. but this whole idea of a causal chain going backwards in time because of the observer effect, uh, is, is problematic in a sense because it, it pretends that we're the only observers. Mm -hmm. But yes, we can participate in an experiment in a quantum sense and be the observer that causes a, a wave function to collapse and a particular result to, to come to bear. Uh, but this leaves out the possibility that's very consistent with the Christian worldview of God as that observer as well. Mm -hmm. so, so what are you as an observer? You're an agent. You're causing things to happen. Mm -hmm. And so in your agency or causality of interacting with the system, you're taking a role in it. And I think God's role in creating and sustaining the universe is consistent with quantum mechanics. You know, it raises some interesting theological questions, but that idea that God is active in creation, I don't yes. know whether observing is quite the right, right term. Right. But that, we, that would is say kind of all, we would say all omnipresent, these yeah. are the Christian terms, all-knowing. All mm -hmm. So if a God is omnipresent and all-knowing, then He's everywhere in all time and space, and even beyond that. And He's all-knowing. You know, there's many verses, uh, Matthew 10, uh, when Jesus is talking to His followers, He says, not a hair falls from your head without God's knowing it. Mm -hmm. um, other places say, in like Colossians, where God sustains the universe. So these are very interesting statements. And when you look at quantum mechanics, it's still consistent with a sustaining influence throughout the whole universe. Well, thanks, Darren. I appreciate your comments. Yes. You know, quantum mechanics is just weird. And at some level, it seems like it's a threat to the Christian faith. But when we really get in and explore what we know and what we don't know and what quantum mechanics has to say, we find that it really is consistent with the Christian faith. And in fact, it points towards a creator. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and look for an article called Does a Universe from Nothing Mean God Doesn't Exist? And you'll get some tools that will help equip you to use this weird thing of quantum mechanics to actually argue for the truth of the Christian faith.